Oh boy. I don't know how this one is going to go today, my friends. YouTube doesn't like it when you do too many things back to back to back. And uh, Brickitech this week has been the definition of that. Particularly today, I just put out a video of Clark and I getting into our Lego C Disney CMFs. We did that yesterday morning and I had to edit it up. And then I wanted to put it out first thing this morning, but it was still exporting. So I was like, okay, we'll just drop it whenever it's done, which is what I did. I think I hear Roxy in there. She's coming down. Always makes me nervous when she comes down the stairs. It's one of these days, like, I, I just feel like she's going to just stumble down. Roxy Bear, come here. She's coming. She's doing good. Come over this way. Everyone probably wants to see you. She's the star of the show here, not me. But um, So I dropped that video. And YouTube, with their notifications, they're like, cool, let's show that to everybody. And then if you do something, like, right after that, they're like, wait, 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 wait. We just let everybody know you did something. We don't need to let them know again. So if you're here, you're going to be one of the lucky few, uh, maybe unlucky few, because today I'm starting Minnie Mouse. And I thought, and I, I don't want to necessarily share the same thing that I built with Mickey. I live streamed myself building this entire figure, which was actually pretty cool. Uh, with Minnie, though, I'm going to do the part that you didn't see, and that is to build her base, because i got to get started somewhere. This was going to be a Mrs. Brickitech build. And I was thinking maybe we could do it this weekend, but then it turns out that uh, on Saturday she is going to visit her friend who had a baby. And then on Sunday it's like the only day that we have to like do anything. So this weekend's looking packed. And next week I want to start on a new project. So uh, I got her blessing to build Minnie Mouse. Kind of stole the build from her, I guess. I'm sure she's probably not too upset about it. Uh, it's, it's just, it, it takes a lot of time to do this. And when you have an actual job, I can imagine that uh, it, Probably the last thing you want to do in your free time is to build a Lego set, especially when you, your free time is such a premium. My free time, you know, I have a little bit more on my hands. Speaking of that, I used some of it this morning. You may notice we're a little early today. I've been finding this like uh, this flow where I live stream at like 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 2.15, something like that. Today we started early, went to an estate sale, and I had, I had some luck there. I got some Dreamcast games. One of which is a Resident Evil. Oh, wait, my microphone, my microphone. Hold on, hold on. I don't want to sound terrible here. There we go. There we go. My bad. My microphone needs to be on. What the heck? If you guys want to hear the the cool, smooth sounds of Brickitect as he builds. And now we're here. Sorry about that. Sometimes I, I put the microphone on and I just don't turn it on. What's up with that? Uh, but yeah, I had some success at the estate sale. It was a really terrible one. But I saw they had all these CDs there, and then in there, there were sprinkled some Dreamcast games. So I, I got like five games. Uh, they were all mixed up and stuff, but when I saw that they had Resident Evil Code Veronica there, I was like, all right, that's a snag. And that's like a $20, $25 game, and I got that for about a dollar. I also got, speaking of Disney stuff, if we're going to keep it Disney-related, ended up getting a Winnie the Pooh plushie. It's a pretty big one for $2 and it's worth like 20 something on eBay. So that was cool. And then we went to the bins after that and I had another amazing $2 day at the bins. So my day was looking good. I just did a Patreon post for my photo of the month club. I see people are already selecting photos, which is cool. Doing like this little uh, Polaroid giveaway thing to, to members every single month, which if you'd like to join Patreon, the links down below. There's my self-promotion for the day. I had to get it out of the way, right? If you're not going to promote yourself, who's going to do it? So I did that, and then I got into this. I did a little um, intro for the My Week in Lego. This is how inception level we're getting here with these with these videos. It's getting a little deep. I did a, a clip for my vlog. Got that done. Perfect. And then I did a clip for a YouTube short. <laughs> Got that done perfect. And then I set up the live stream, and then here we are. With only one thing to determine, as I was talking about yesterday. Is any of this worth my time? Right now, I don't know, I'm going to have to look at the data from this week. Everything's still kind of processing on YouTube's end. I'm just going to kind of have to go back and look and be like, is it worth putting all this time and effort into this? You know, is it? There's parts of it that I... I I know and know are, which is like just making regular videos. That's always that's always a thing. But like doing the live streams and doing all these like YouTube shorts and stuff. The shorts are are pretty cake work, but the live streams it kind of 
That's that's the I, I would say the hardest thing is the live streams. But I enjoy it. I just like I'm like trying to figure it all out. So bear with me as I experiment with things. I think it's good to do that. If you're wondering about the internals of Mickey's stuff, it looks like she's more uh, like yellow and pink. And Mickey was like teal and orange. So I think they're just trying to infiltrate these like uh, alternate colors into the system, which is good to see because mock builders are going to want some light yellow uh, studs on side things. Was the Winnie the Pooh uh, an older one from the 80s? I would love it. I can get it if you want me to. I'll, I'll get it at the end of the stream before we wrap things up here. I'll run up and get it. It's, it's literally just up the stairs uh, if you want to see it. It's, it's pretty, pretty big and he has a, uh, like a textured shirt on that says poo. So I don't know how old it is, but it's pretty cool. I, I debated whether to keep it because I think it's nice and it's from Walt Disney World. But then I looked the price up and I was like, all right, I, I, could, I could sell this for $20. I think it might get sold. I could add it to the Clark Man's plushy army, but man, that kid has, he's got an ungodly amount of plush. We are going to, one day, we're gonna be that family at the yard sale that has a wagon full of plushies to sell. DB's here, Ray's here, Janelle, of course. Welcome guys, Clay Turtle in the house. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for stopping by again. Not a popular place to be on a day that you put out a regular video. And that's, I, I think, probably where I'm going to go with this. I think, honestly, like, if, if, if I'm, unless something surprises me in the numbers, today's probably going to be my last live stream day. We're going to go out with a fizzle. Uh, and instead, I'm going to dedicate that time to, uh, to doing, like, regular videos. Like, even this, if I just made, like, a little video about this, or even a short, which I guess is kind of what I'm doing, they do exponentially better than than YouTube streams. So I think what I'm gonna do is save the live streaming for Patreon style things, whether it be Lego or other things. In fact, while I was setting this up on that topic, I came up with like a really cool idea for something that I can do over there, almost on, on along the lines of, you know how like every day that I come here and live stream with you, um, I start talking about like things that I did and like kind of what's going on that particular day. I'm thinking about making like a little bit of a, a journal series like that, where it's not missing pieces, but it's kind of just like a little tap in. And I might do it while I'm walking or hiking or doing something else. I think that might be kind of cool. Like a little bit of a multitask, but kind of a, a, a brain dump of sorts, which is I, I think gonna be, could be something really fun for, for people that they would enjoy. And then I can find ways to promote that. This is the business side of things, guys. Welcome to, welcome to I, I guess trying to figure out your way. <laughs> It's it's a never-ending battle. But I enjoy it. I enjoy what I do. I'm just not good at the business side of it. I do, I spend a lot of time on things that don't make sense to spend time on. Maybe that's a bad thing. Maybe it's a good thing. DB says, I think that's why so many YouTube streamers all headed over to Twitch a couple of uh, years back. Just no money in streaming on YouTube anymore from the sounds of it. Yeah, I don't think, I don't know if even Twitch is that, but I will say the, the difference between Twitch and YouTube in terms of streaming, from what I can tell, is that like Twitch is a live streaming platform, right? And that's what viewers expect there. That's what they want. YouTube isn't necessarily that. YouTube's a place primarily that people go for just regular videos. YouTube is trying to turn it into a place that people go for shorts as opposed to losing their audience to TikTok. I think a lot of the audience, Lego audience on YouTube has already gone to TikTok, most likely. Uh, I don't know about the creators, maybe they've gone there too, but I think most people are, are still making like YouTube videos, but the, the shorts thing is something that YouTube really wants a piece of. But where, I think where Twitch um, excels, or at least creating content on Twitch excels, particularly in the live streaming space, is that the audience on Twitch, and I'm? Th this is not gonna be any offense to you, I'm just keeping it 100, as the kids would say, as maybe no one says. The audience on Twitch, and the mentality or the, the culture on Twitch, I think is what you'd wanna say, the culture on Twitch, is one where the people that watch the streams, they, support the streamers. And I'm not saying this like I have anything against 
people that watch YouTube streams or anything like that. But like on, t on Twitch, people that watch those streams know that the way that people make money on Twitch is through people like su subbing on there. Like on YouTube, you know, subscribing is free, right? Whereas if you subscribe to a Twitch channel, I think it's like $5 a month or something. And then the, the person that streams gets half of that and Twitch takes half. It's, that's the way things typically go on there. But the mentality on Twitch is that, okay, I enjoy watching this streamer. I want them to, to continue streaming. I want to get perks or benefits or whatever comes from like supporting a streamer. And like, that's what happens over there. YouTube on the other hand, and again, this is not intended to be offensive to people that watch YouTube. I'm a YouTube viewer through and through. People on YouTube expect everything for free. There is, there is not a, a, a situation on YouTube in, in most cases where anyone has any anticipation of ever spending money on anything. And that includes YouTube's premier product, which is YouTube Premium. I'm a YouTube Premium su subscriber because I hate ads on YouTube. I think they are way overdoing it. I can't stand it. I like using YouTube Music as well, and I also like, uh, and I think this is YouTube uh, benefit, YouTube Premium benefit, where you can turn the screen off on your phone or device and listen to something, like listen to a video, which is just silly that that's locked out of of like typical YouTube. Uh, and I, that may have changed since I signed up, but I think that's the case. Um, so even YouTube Premium, like the percentage of people that are signed up for YouTube Premium is incredibly low. And it's, it's kind of expensive too. Like it's, you really have to be a heavy YouTube user to have any benefit in using YouTube Premium. That being said, Creators would be much better off if people were to sign up for YouTube Premium because it's it's more money, I, probably for YouTube, but also the creator. And it, you can see when you get paid from YouTube, there is a small percentage that comes from YouTube Premium subscribers, but that's that's far and few between. Like the number of people that that spend money on YouTube is so tiny. I even notice it too. Like um, sometimes I'll watch people that stream Disney stuff. You know, like they're live streaming from Disney World, and I really love to. I love to watch those, but I notice even these people, like I watched this one, I think, I think he had like 800 people watching something like that. Like it was a pretty substantial number, right? Like 800 people watching your streams crazy. He didn't have a single person. This is on YouTube. He didn't have a single person super chat him during the entire time that I just had it running in the background, which is like, it, it kind of, I guess, demonstrates my point. And I, I wonder if that, that same gentleman, if he had gone over to um, like Twitch, for example, what would his experience be there where it's a, it's a different audience with a different culture and different expectations? I don't know. It's hard to say, I suppose, but maybe he's, you know, maybe he prefers YouTube. I mean, everyone has different reasons and things and sometimes it doesn't just come down to money, but if this is all that guy does, and I believe it is, all he does is stream from uh, Disney, like every day. I, like, I think it'd be one of the hardest jobs, honestly. Like you might think, boy, that sounds like a dream job. Live streaming, just being at Disney World. The dude was there for six hours and he does this like every day. Like, I don't know what you would show or talk about. Like eventually <laughs> as exciting as Disney is, I just think eventually like that would, that would get to be a little too much, right? Like what, it, what are you going to do? So I don't know. That's, that's just my thoughts on it. Maybe you have a different experience. Again, I don't say any of this to offend anyone. And I, I hope that didn't come off that way. It's just, just being real, you know, like the, the mentality on YouTube in, in general is, is one of, of people that, that want free stuff. Like you, you, people go to YouTube to watch tutorial videos. Obviously they're not going to pay for those, right? People like the YouTube user is a free user is a freeloader. I'm a YouTube user. I, I, I don't, outside of YouTube premium, I don't really watch any live streams. I, I can't say that I, that I do that that much to contribute. So I just, I just, I just watch like we all do. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that. But, um, you know, other platforms, I, I see a little differently even on TikTok too. And I don't know if maybe because it's a, 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 a younger demographic, but when I see people stream on TikTok, they have the most bizarre, like super chats there, which is like, uh, 
you can like put a hat on somebody or like they get uh, a, a flower or something like that. There's like these, these gifts that animate and pop up on the screen. And I guess that's kind of fun, right? Like that's a fun thing to happen. So maybe that's, that's incentive too. YouTube really doesn't have something like that. I don't know. I, I, I'm sure there's probably people that have discussed this at length, but I, I find it all to be very fascinating. Like the, I guess, what's the word that I keep using? The culture of, of things like that. I find it all to be very interesting. What are your thoughts on such things? Am I, am I right on this? Am I wrong? It's just what I've noticed in my, my expertise. And I guess the other thing with YouTube, uh, live streams, the other, I, I would say biggest disadvantage is that, uh, well, I, I looked at this thing, since we're on the topic of this, we'll just make the whole discussion today about this as I build here. YouTube has this, this data that shows how many of your viewers watch videos, how many watch videos in shorts, how many watch videos in live streams, and the number that watch videos obviously is extremely high, and most of them are videos only. There's a smaller percentage that watch videos and live streams. And then an even for me at least, maybe it's because I don't really do shorts, but an exponentially smaller number of people that watch videos and shorts. People come to YouTube for videos. Makes sense, nothing wrong with that. If I were to do more shorts, probably that those numbers would change. But what I've noticed with the shorts is that when I, and this is like from just a few days of trying it out, right? So this isn't definitive information by any means. But when I do YouTube short, Obviously, it gets more views because it's it, it's it's being fed through the shorts algorithm or the shorts feed or whatever. And what happens in, in the, that situation is that new people end up finding your your content because it's not just served to the Brickitect audience who by by large aren't really interested in YouTube shorts necessarily. It goes to oh I got to put a piece in here. It goes out to the the general public. And then the cool thing that happens from that is someone might see that short, and I think this is literally the only benefit to shorts, is that they see your content and they're like, oh, I've never seen that person before. And then they see you do all this other stuff or whatever, and then they subscribe. And I've been no noticing I'm getting more subscribers from YouTube shorts than even my videos. But from live streams, zero, zilch. So not only is like 70% of my audience not interested in live streaming, it's not generating any new viewership either. Like live streaming, I guess, is to, to, to cater to or to foster a relationship with your current audience. But when your current audience isn't really necessarily interested in such things, that takes me back to the why even do it, right? I'm, I'm making something and like, again, this isn't, this isn't supposed to be mean or harsh. And if you are a person that loves live streams, this is just being honest from a business perspective. Why would you make a product for someone, like if you were in business, why would you make a product for someone or for a group of people that aren't really interested in that product and there's no new customers that want that either? Right? You got to think about those things. Now, Missing Pieces, my podcast, I kind of ignore these things because I, I really like doing the podcast and it's like a part of my, my uh, part of what I do, right? So I, I ignore the fact that there's like, a thousand people in total that, that watch, listen to that. Each one of those, if you're curious, if you're curious how much money I make podcasting on YouTube, it's like maybe $3 an episode, right? Like three bucks. And it takes me, I sit down for like an hour and record it. I make a, a little outline ahead of time. I have to process the video, which kind of does it, this thing on its own. And then I upload it and I put it out to the podcasting platform. So let's just round up and say two hours of work, like $3. From a business perspective, the podcast should get cut, right? But then there's this intangible thing to that. And I think I was supposed to put these on somewhere. Hopefully not. I might have to go back in and watch, figure out where that is. Um, there's an intangible part of that though that I, I think is important to me that I'd like to, that I always want to continue doing it for that reason. Would that, though, from a business perspective, and I'll get to your, your comments here in just a moment, would it be way smarter for me? Where did those go? Mystery piece. Would it be smarter for me to make the podcast something that's an, ad an addition to the Patreon thing? Because 
if you're talking $3 per episode, let's say that rounds up to $12. There they are. That rounds up to $12 a month. If you had people signing up at Patreon at $6 per person, you would literally need two listeners. You would need two listeners a month for the financial side of thing things to work, right? Two listeners to your podcast. And it kind of goes to demonstrate the value of of finding a uh, like I guess a smaller audience that's that's into all the things that you do. Because it, it goes to show you that you could have, I mean, you could probably have, uh, in, in that case, you have an audience of three people that listen to your podcast each month. That's three people that would then produce more income than an audience of a thousand people on YouTube. What's easier to get? A thousand, I, I didn't even put that other piece in that I was supposed to put in. An audience of a thousand people or an audience of three people. And I think, was it Kevin Kelly? Is that the guy's name? He made, he did like this article a long time ago that's, I think it's called A Thousand True Fans. And the premise of it is that if you just had a thousand people that supported whatever the thing is that you do, it's probably enough for you to like make a living at that. Whereas in YouTube, that number is much, much higher. Anyways, let me get into your thoughts on this as my rant ends. And you know, it's, I don't know how people are going to take this because I haven't looked yet. Maybe I don't want to look. Uh, but I think it's kind of, it'd be kind of interesting, I think for, at least for me as someone that does this, to hear someone that does this <laughs> discuss these things, you know, in a very honest way. Like I have no shame in talking about money or financial things or anything like that. I, th I think it's all very fascinating, but it's one of those taboo topics. So you got to be like, oh gosh, you know what I mean? All right, let's go back. I'm going back. Ray says premium's worth it. I think so. Here's the base so far, by the way. We've got we've got a base. The base is here. All right. Um, that's I didn't know your mic wasn't on. Yeah, the mic was not on. Hopefully it is now. It's working. Okay, let me get through here. Uh, DB says oh, we got that one. Oh, Ray said premium's worth it. Megan says good luck on mini. I'll check out tonight after work. She, see, she watches after the fact. Streamlabs can work on any work on any live stream like YouTube. Yeah, I think there is there could be one way I think this this may work would be to multi-stream. So you have your stream go to uh, YouTube, you could have it go to I'm assuming TikTok, you could have it go to Twitch, Kick probably. That would be a smart way to do this, I think. Cuz then you could find a whole bunch of new people and then pull them over to YouTube if that was your goal. Uh, DB says, I always found those badges and actions and stuff the worst thing watching someone on Twitch. Even a chill stream is like one of Jang's just immediately become unwatchable. Oh, you mean like, uh, you're talking about the stuff that I was talking about like on TikTok where things pop up and things like that? Yeah, I think it depends on how you set it up. But it's, more importantly is the culture over there. Stream donation notifications are the worst. Ruins the flow of the live stream, especially if you watch the VOD. I also, the other thing that ruins that too is talking to people that are in a, in a, in a chat that doesn't exist in the future. Um, I think you're better off, like in, in this case, I would be better off, like if I was making this content where I wanted to share the build of this and I wanted to talk about random stuff while I do it, I think doing it as a live stream is actually detrimental to the ultimate goal because I would say by the time this is all said and done, I would say 80% of the people are going to watch this after the fact. Maybe 20% of the people are going to watch it live, right? So most people that, that I'm ranting on about all this stuff, or not really ranting because I'm not upset, just, just kind of delivering information. Most people are going to see this much later and they're not going to care at all about you in the chat or me saying hi to whoever. In fact, to me that, like watching this later, that is distracting because it's unnecessary, right? Like just talk about the things that you want to talk about. So that's probably the better move is just to essentially set this up in the same way that I do. And instead of having that back and forth and like being like, oh, we're live and all this, just go right into doing what I want to do. And then later chopping that up, right? And coming back and being like, 
okay, uh, that little part dragged on, or I, I didn't need to talk about that that long. And I think something like that would probably be kind of cool to do. And then it, it really caters to the people in the future that are going to watch, assuming that there are people in the future that are watching. Because then they can, uh, they have a more, uh, I, I guess, a more, a better experience, I think. Sports Gaming says, long time fan of the channel. I enjoy the streams, but I think it has to do with the time of day that you're streaming. Yeah, it's also <laughs> the, the, the strength and the weakness, the time of a stream, too. And that's, I think that might hold some people back from watching live streams. That's something I, it would be interesting to do a poll or something like that. Like, what's the thing that keeps you from watching a live stream? And some people, it could simply be, well, I wasn't available when it was live, so why would I go and watch something like that? It could be a good topic. For me, though, like, I, I typically, I don't have new notifications turned on for YouTube at all, because I feel like it would be, like, a little too much. So I just find things way after they've, they've been done. And I would watch a live stream afterwards. I just don't see it very often. I, none of the channels that I subscribe to, I, I can't think of anyone that I watch on YouTube, like outside the Lego space, even the Lego space, I guess. I don't really see people live streaming. There was a period of time where it was kind of popular. But like, if you look at big YouTube channels, and I guess this is another sign. Of it, of it not making sense, right? I think a lot of these people have already figured this out. How many YouTubers do you watch that have, let, let's just have a, a small, like let's say 100,000 subscribers or more, or you could say any number, a million subscribers or more. When's the last time you saw one of them live stream? Like when's the last time Mr. Beast did a YouTube live stream? When's the last time, uh, Logan Paul did a YouTube live stream. When's the last time Casey Neistat did a YouTube? None of these guys live stream. Why would they? Like, there's just, there, it's nonsensical. And you can imagine what the, the chat would be like for those accounts. It, I don't know. Maybe they do it. I just miss it. So, that's, that's kind of what I've been thinking. I've been pondering it. I was going to look, let the data kind of work its way out here this week. And just kind of see. Because this week I was like, I'm going to try this this three, three thronged approach to making Lego videos. But like the data comes in very slowly. Like I don't even think the data is in for the, for the last two uh, live streams that I did. So it takes a long time for that to come through, but just based on what I'm, what I'm seeing, I'm just like, meh, I think we're gonna, we're gonna ax that. And then I'll dedicate that, that energy into something else. So if you're here, this might, might be the last one for a bit. And I think, I feel like, I don't know how many times I need to learn this lesson because I feel like I've learned this before too. Because I get into it and I'm like, I enjoy it. But I'm like, I don't know. Maybe this turns into something else. I think the shorts though are, are pretty fun. I don't know what that's going to result in. But I sure do uh, like the process for making it. It's so short and sweet and to the point and very simple. So... I think I'll continue those, at least for the time being, especially if I can multi-purpose those. Maybe we'll do a restream type thing. I think that's the company that does the, the streaming where you, where you can go into like a platform and essentially stream to several different locations. So if I could stream to, I'll say like three different places, including YouTube as one of those, that could be worthwhile because then you're reaching audiences unreached before. But to... To make a live stream just for a YouTube audience that already that already exists on your channel that aren't necessarily interested in streaming, maybe I would maybe what I would do, actually, maybe I would do the streaming thing to the all the different platforms, but but YouTube, YouTube would be the one place that I wouldn't do it to. And then I could be like, hey, if you guys want other stuff, it's over on YouTube. It depends on how many they let you do, I guess. I mean, if there's no harm in it, like if they let you do three or four different places, I guess YouTube would might as well be one of them. But it'd be cool to like do it to all the other platforms. Like what would live streaming on TikTok be like? What would live streaming on Twitch be like? I've, I've experimented with it on my gaming channel, but it, to me, I just found it kind of discouraging because uh, 
it, it go from like all these people watching my YouTube gaming stream to like nobody being on Twitch. And you're never going to get found on Twitch either. Like I think Twitch is a giant waste of time at this point, personally. So I think, I, I think you'd be better off doing something like Kick, which is kind of like the upcoming Twitch competitor. Maybe Instagram. I don't know if you can live stream to Instagram from these other platforms, but that would be a good one. And TikTok, I think, would be good too. We'll see. You can do up to 15. Dang. Restream. You can do up to 15, then you might as well just go everywhere. I wonder what that looks like. I guess I'd have, like, on my end, I would see the chat from all the different places. And then you, but the only problem is you'd be reading chat. <laughs> That no one else sees because they're like they're on this thing and the things over there. I don't know. It's it's all kinds of fascinating to me. I love this kind of stuff. As for like you watching this, this probably isn't your forte like it is mine. But I appreciate you humoring me with my with my uh, thinking out loud. I like these kind of kind of things. And when you do this, like uh, I don't want to say professionally, but professionally, you got to you got to ponder. You got to think about stuff. And you got to be like, hmm, I wonder. That being said, I'll probably end up taking the stream down because I feel like this this could be something that like I don't know could leave a bad taste in people's mouth because people don't like it when when you uh, when you discuss finances or the financial side of things. It's one of those things we've been conditioned to never talk about, primarily because employers don't want you finding out that you make less money than the same person that's doing the same job that's sitting ten feet away from you. So, like, money is, like, a taboo topic, but it should definitely be something that people keep in the forefront. Especially when it comes to personal finance. That's a topic I could talk about all day and how, how important it is to manage that properly. If you're wondering what I'm building right now, it, this is, like, the end of the film reel. Did you know I'm do doing Lego while I do this? Ray says, these streams are more like meeting friends for virtual coffee. Yeah, it's sort of like that. So we're virtual friends with virtual coffee. Have it have, have a coffee emote pop up now. DB says, I think I'll need to get signed up for the Patreon upper tier soon rather than later to get my uh, live stream fix. Yeah, didn't you cancel? I think you canceled outright. You should probably come back. In fact, if you join by the end of the month, I have the photo of the month club where you can choose one of the photos. I shared them on Greg's World, some of the ones I took yes, yesterday on Greg's World in like a community post. But uh, you can choose which one you want and then I'll mail it out to you every month. Photo of the Month Club. And it encourages me to be a photographer because then I'm like, ooh, I get to take lots of photos and I'm gonna pick my three favorites. I'm gonna do like three or four favorites and then send them out. But I think, um, I think a lot of stuff's gonna start kind of finding its way over there. And that is, I think, going to be a smart move for the future of Gregatech Industries or whatever the heck this is. Uh, it will leave some people out, which is, you know, always, always leaves a bad taste in people's mouth. People's mouth. But, you know, um, it's, it's like I've had people, like with the whole Patreon thing, I've had people complain like, well, like, it should be free, like the YouTube people, the mentality we were talking about earlier, the culture. Everything should be free, but it's like, would you go to a, a sporting event and complain because you don't have the, the financial ability to buy a ticket to go there and watch it? Not comparing what I do to sports or anything, um, or saying it, it's, it's uh, comparable to that, but it's like, would you go to the movies and be like, well, I, I can't afford a ticket. Why, why can't I watch that? Why can't I watch that movie? I don't, I, of course I don't have a ticket. They're like, would you like to buy a ticket? And you're like, no, I'm not buying a ticket, but I want to watch the movie. And the movie, like I've seen movies before for free. Why, why can't I watch this? It's kind of like that. And I get that. I totally get it. Um, but then there's like, you know, you got to think about the financial side of things, which I'm, I'm trying to not suck at because <laughs> I have historically. I just do, I, I, I kind of follow my heart more than I follow the, the money things. And I think it's, it's definitely, um, I think it's, it's hurt me, uh, maybe, maybe not in the long run, but probably because I just, I don't know. I just do what I love to do. Like even in the Lego space, not just when it comes to memberships or Patreon or anything, but like the Lego space, I've never bought a Lego set simply because it's the newest set to be out and I know that a lot of people are going to click the video if I build that set. I buy sets that I love, that I enjoy. 
financially, is that a bad thing to, to do? Probably, you know. You see what people like. They want, like, the newest and the best. Uh, in the meantime, I'm telling people, don't spend full, full price on Lego. Buy the things you love. I share my passion with, with what I buy and what I do. And um, to a certain group, I think that's, that's admirable. But, like, you're never going to get it found telling people to uh, wait for the greatest gift with purchase time, you know. Instead, you're gonna if you're make if you're thinking about making a Lego channel, maybe you should follow the trends. And it's like the day something comes out, you rush off to the Lego store, you buy that thing immediately, you run home, get that video edited up where you're you're standing in front of the Lego store with the box or whatever, and then immediately after that, you uh, you build it up as quick as you can, so you can be the first person to have a review out, or better yet, have Lego send it to you ahead of time. That's even better. Uh, doing all those things, genius moves financially. The way I do it, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. When's it gonna go on sale? When's there gonna be a gift of purchase? I think I'll wait for double VIP. And it's like, you know, if, if I didn't like this set right here, I would have never bought it, right? I think that's the only reason you should do what you, that you do. Is that even a sentence? The only reason that you should do what you do. I think you should follow your heart, primarily, since we're done with this, this is my, my parting words. I think you should follow your heart, do what you love to do, Find a way, be consistent, stay at it, follow your passions, and I, I think in the long run things will work out for you. But there is an element to that too, which has kind of been the topic of today's discussion, where I think you do have to also look at the, what you're investing in that and how you, you spend that time and effort too. I think there needs to be some balance there. And I am not very good at balance ever. <laughs> I always go one way or the other, um, but I'm gonna get I'm gonna get better at it. And I think a lot of it comes down to just kind of reviewing statistics, as as boring as that seems, and uh, thinking about like the tides and where things go. And I'm happy to do that and try things out. It doesn't hurt to to experiment and to see what's uh, what's good, what's bad, and if something's working for you, great. If something's not working, then you you, you figure out something else. The only thing you don't do, my friends. You never give up. And that's where I'm going to send you guys out. I hope you enjoyed today's uh, stream. Here's what I built. Very exciting little uh, stand for Minnie Mouse to go on. I'm going to build the rest of this up. Uh, some of it today, probably. Oh, yeah, two o'clock. Some of it today. Some of it tomorrow. And I'll do like a... It'll be a part of my week in Lego. Where uh, the majority of my audience would prefer to see it. As opposed to a live stream. And I'll make a little short of it. Showing Minnie off and all that fun stuff. So on that, I hope you guys have a glorious rest of your day. Hope you enjoyed the conversation and maybe if you're ever contemplating going into this this world of uh, of streaming or making videos or content creation, maybe this gave you some insight into it. Maybe it's it's told you to, to stay clear of it. Maybe it was just something interesting to, to hear someone in the biz talk about. I hope that was that. Or maybe it just made you like wildly angry. And if that's the case, I'm not really sorry. Just, you, if I appreciate your uh, your opinion or how you feel, you don't need to tell me about it. If it upset you to the point that, that you need to leave, that's understandable. I hope you find the, uh, the joy out there somewhere where you can find it. And on that, we're gonna end this live stream. Click in the button, and then I'm gonna click confirm